Today in the show, we're going to talk a little about fall manure management. And quite frankly, I don't care when you're putting that manure on, you've got some considerations. First, cation exchange capacity, like we talked about a little bit earlier, in order to determine how much manure you can really apply safely. But beyond that, it's just about nutrient management, and also it's a little bit about the smell. Well, Brian's concerned about the smell, not because it's just unpleasant, but because you're actually losing money when you're smelling a strong smell of manure. What you're smelling is ammonia. Well, when you think about farming, one of the key ingredients that we need for our crops is nitrogen, and one of the ways we put it out there is with anhydrous ammonia. And it doesn't really matter what the form is, you've got nitrogen there that's leaving that you already had, you've already paid for, and you could have it out on your farm. So we don't want to have this strong smell of manure, we want that to be in our soil and ultimately in our crop. So a couple of ways that you can manage that smell and ultimately the nitrogen, one is with treatments to the manure. Let's say it's a liquid pit. There are plenty of biological products out there like Entercept, for example, that will help lock up the nitrogen and sulfur for that matter. So it is going to leave more nitrogen and sulfur when you actually apply the manure in your field, less will be going up in the air. If it's a dry manure that you're dealing with, you could use a product like Decomp, another biological, for example, to help speed the process of turning that manure into compost. Once it's compost, you're going to have a lot less smell, and basically you've got all those nutrients are going to be bound together tighter so you don't have all this loss. The other thing that you want to look at, in addition to hopefully tying up some of the nutrients so you don't lose them as smell initially, it's are you going to bury that manure and bury it well? If it's liquid manure, we want to inject, and we want to inject a little bit on the deep side. With dry manure, you're gonna to have to put it out and hopefully quickly work that into the ground. Basically, the point is get your manure covered with as much soil as you can, as quickly as you can, and you're going to trap the nutrients in the soil, which also then traps the smell. The other thing is timing, and like Brian started off this segment by mentioning, well, we're talking about fall manure application here. Fall is different in one part of the country versus the other. Now, if you've still got a lot of growing season left, we're seeing a growing number of farmers who are putting a cover crop out there, trying to tie up some of those nutrients out in the field and hold them in place. Now, where we farm, if we can get the manure applied in the fall before freeze up and before that ground gets hard, well, we don't have to wait very long and our ground is going to be frozen. So once we get that down into our soil, it's pretty safe for a while. But if you're in an area where it's going to be warm for several months yet, you may consider adding a cover crop to help hold that manure in place. When it comes to environmental concerns, there are really two big things with manure. One is nitrogen, two, phosphorus. Now, these are nutrients that are very, very different. We talked about nitrogen holding capacity a little bit already with CEC today, but when it comes to manure, we always want to make sure you are testing it. Find out how much nitrogen's in there. Find out how much phosphorus is in there. We just want to make sure we're not overdoing it, but you don't really know if you're overdoing it or not, depending on the soil. How many nutrients does the soil have already? Anyway, back to nitrogen and phosphorus. Nitrogen can leach, so that we worry about going down and potentially contaminating groundwater going down. So that's why Darren said either use a cover crop or just put your manure on very late in the fall, right before freeze up and then plant your crop right away in the spring to use up that nitrogen before it even has the opportunity to get down into the ground. With phosphorus, it's the exact opposite. Phosphorus does not leach. I mean, it could if you put on a thousand times too much, but basically we're never seeing phosphorus end up down on a tile line or anything like that. It's not ending up in groundwater. How phosphorus contaminates water is with soil erosion. And this is where I come back to, we want you to bury the manure with some soil. If the manure is left on the soil surface, which means that phosphorus is left on the soil surface, whenever there is wind or rain erosion and soil leaves, well guess what, phosphorus leaves. And phosphorus is the number one water quality issue we have in the United States today. And the reason why it's a water quality issue is because when phosphorus gets into water, it is typically the limiting factor for algae growth. So when it ends up in a lake or a river or a stream, you have more algae and that's the problem. Brian talked about a couple of the big nutrients here, nitrogen and now phosphorus, but I also think about micronutrients and oftentimes as I'm talking to farmers and in my travels, they'll say, well, I don't need to put micros on because I have manure. 
Well, yes, manure is certainly going to have levels of various micronutrients, but is it the ideal level for your crop? I've talked to many producers over the years, whether it's hog producers, dairy producers, uh, cattlemen, who say, you know what? I'm running into a problem with livestock health, or I'm running into a problem in my crop system, and I've traced it back to a micronutrient. Don't fall into that category where you say, well, I've got manure, so I'm getting all the micros I need. Do some testing on your manure and do a complete test, just like you would with your soil, to see exactly what's in it. So here's the whole point. We want you to soil test, and we want you to take a look at what does the manure have in it. But then ultimately, what we really care about is raising a good crop. So you've got to look at, all right, what does my crop actually need for all the nutrients, not just N, P, and K, but the micronutrients as well. And if you're finding, you know what, between my soil and my manure, I don't have exactly the right ratio, which I'm sure you don't, the odds are you're gonna to have to supplement manure with commercial fertilizer. Just make sure you're not overdoing it on the nitrogen or the phosphorus or any of the nutrients with manure. So cut that rate down a little bit, supplement with commercial fertilizer, and generally speaking, you're gonna be in good shape. The last thing I would say is just because manure to your operation may be free, that doesn't mean that putting it on your field is a good thing necessarily. Now, don't get me wrong, in most cases, it is a great thing to put that out on your ground. But let's say you have 100 acres of ground and 20,000 head of cattle. Obviously, you can't put all that manure onto the ground. I'm making a big exaggeration here where, well, I would never think of putting all the manure from that many cattle on a small piece of ground. The challenge is you may have thousands of acres of ground and still too much manure for that ground. You do need to do some soil testing, as Brian mentioned, and you may have to stop applying manure in some cases, especially if you get an excess of some nutrients out in your field. Sodium is one that comes to mind. I've seen plenty of soil tests that are way too high in sodium, even seen some that are way too high in nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium, the big three. I've seen fields that are just way too high where we wouldn't recommend putting on manure, maybe for several years, just to get that ground back in line. Salt is the other one. So sodium and salt are the two big things that are watch outs with all manure. Well, once again, we really encourage you, if you've got manure, test it, test your soil, don't over apply, supplement with commercial fertilizer, and really look at all the things you need to have a good balance in your soil. Well, one other thing we didn't talk about with manure is sometimes there may be some weed seeds that could be in the manure. Hopefully it's not our weed of the week, but if it is, we'll show you how to stop it coming up next.